I've mentioned at different times that our uh, worship team normally on a Sunday morning is you know, all volunteers from the congregation except for the worship leader. And Cole led for 10 years here. God's called him to North Coast Church, so he's in a new place. And so uh, today I can tell you that every person on our worship team today was a volunteer, including the worship leader, uh, Jason, who's a school teacher in Salinas, who volunteers with our students and uh, led us in a worship space. So what, what a great morning, yeah. Um, we're kicking off this year talking about launching into discipleship, you know, going from where we are as followers of Jesus and going to higher places, just really following God where he's leading us, following God where he wants us to go. And, and to understand that, we've been looking at the word of God and we've basically been saying, can we look at people who followed God faithfully and learn from their example? Because the Bible is given to us for a reason. Yes, it holds truths and absolutes that we're to follow, but it also tells stories of real people in a real time in history who really followed God, even when it was challenging. And so a few weeks ago, we learned that Peter is kind of a model for us as we're growing as disciples. You know, and, and discipleship is really growing in Jesus, growing up in faith and in community and growing up in faith and then going with Jesus. There's two parts to discipleship, growing up in faith, becoming more mature, and then going where Jesus calls us to go and following him. And Peter did that with like this, like, I'm in, Lord. Yeah, you, you read Peter's story. Anytime there was an invitation, he's like, I'm going, I'm in. He was just, and that's a great example for us to follow with bold excitement. Mary, we looked at Mary's life, and we saw what it means to be a disciple, to grow in Jesus and to go with Jesus, even when it's confusing, even when you're not really sure what's next. When you had things planned, and it doesn't turn out the way you planned, which is most of life, can you keep following Jesus? And then last week, we learned from Esther. And Esther, what a story, what an example of being able to, willing to risk whatever it took she says, I'll go where God's calling me to go. I'll do what he's calling me to do. And these are her words. And if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to follow God. What an example of faith. And today, today we're going to be in Genesis chapter 12. And we're going to be learning from Abraham. Abraham, one of the fathers of the, of the Jewish faith. One of the fathers of, of what God did in the Old Testament. And Abraham shows us this. And if you're not looking at me, you got to look at me right now. If you're looking down, taking notes, look for a second. Here's what Abraham teaches us. Everybody watch. Here's how, here's, here's how you grow in faith and how you go with Jesus, where he's called you to go. Everybody ready? This is dramatic. You're going to lock this in your mind. Here it is. Take a next step. And then take the next step. And then take the next step. One step at a time. One faithful step towards the will of God at a time. See, oftentimes, when we think about following after Jesus, growing in him, we look at the end result, where we want to be. And it's so far from where we are, we just give up. I never get there. The Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, that we are to grow into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's God's goal. That you, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're not a Christian and you become one, this will be his goal for you. That you would grow into the measure of the stature of of the fullness of Christ. Have you arrived there yet? Are you fully like Jesus? I'm not. And I've never met anybody on this planet who is. So when we look at that, it can feel daunting. It can feel like it's just too much. Unless you just take the next step. What's the next step God wants for you to take? Now, at the end of the message, and most pastors won't tell you at the beginning what the end is going to be. At the end of the message, we're going to stop and take time for prayer. And I'm going to invite every single person online, every person on campus, to pray about what's their one next step of faithfulness to boldly follow God. One next step. Here's my suspicion. Many of us already know what it is. Because God's been nudging us for weeks or months or years. Take the step. Take the step. Follow me. You know what it is. For many of us, we already know. The question is, will we be inspired enough and moved by the Spirit of God and by the truth of the Scriptures to say, today's the day I take that step. Today's the day I move forward in what God wants me to do. And so we're thinking about following one step at a time, learning from Abraham, and, and the song that we just heard sung so beautifully. I was listening to that song, and I actually didn't have this in my notes, but as I was listening to the song, I just pulled up my notes and wrote this in there. Here's, in the song, here's what, what, some of the lyrics. I could just stay. I could just stay where I am. I could hold on. <laughs> Cling on to what I have right now. I could never leave home. Find that safe place. Just tuck myself in. I'm good. But then the song says, but you have called me higher. You have called me deeper. So I'll go. God has called us to more than we imagine or dream. 
Will you today open your heart and say, God, I'm ready to take my next step? Because it's easy to get stuck. And we're going to learn this about Abraham in just a moment. But I have a question for you. Have you ever gotten stuck along the way? Have you ever gotten stuck? Start treading water, kind of just not moving anymore. Have you ever had an experience where you get stuck? Getting stuck is really, really easy. I saw this picture as I was thinking about getting stuck. And I want to show it to you. It should show up on the screen there. It's a... Uh, some people say, oh, it's cute. But have you ever been there? You ever been like, uh, uh, help, <laughs> somebody? And I found another raccoon from a different perspective. Maybe you feel like that. I'm not exactly sure. Or maybe you just feel like you're stuck in traffic. You ever, and, and if you've ever been stuck in traffic where you're kind of like, I'm not in control. I can't, I can't get out of here. Whatever the picture or the image is, it's really, really easy for us to get stuck for us to, along the way, uh, recognize that we're not moving the way God has called us to move. So I'm going to ask that we would just bow our heads together, quiet our hearts, and ask God to speak to us through Abraham's life from the word of God. And ask the spirit of God to speak to each of our hearts. Living God, there's many people here today who may be feeling stuck in different ways. Maybe moving ahead in some areas, but in some areas they just have gotten stuck. And you're inviting us. You're, you're calling us to follow you. Jesus, you set a path for us. And step by step, one step after another, we can become more and more like you. So our prayer is that wherever we're stuck today, Lord, you would begin to break things loose. Wherever we need to take that next step, we would have clarity in our hearts and our spirits from your word as to what our next step is. And Lord, our prayer, not just my prayer, Lord, our prayer is that before this time is done today, we will commit ourselves to, to the one next step you've placed in front of us and be faithful to follow you, even as Abraham was faithful. Grow in our hearts a faithfulness that follows you, whatever it takes. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Well, you're going to see a map on the screen, and if you're at home online, you'll see a map on your screen there. And what I want to show you here is sort of Abraham's journey. Uh, down in the bottom right corner there, you'll see it in, in, in Chaldea there, Ur, and that, that was the region where his family was from. And they made a move. They were going to move all the way over to the left side of the map in that box there. The promised land, the holy land. That was the, that was the goal. So his father leads the family. And off they go. And they start traveling. Now, you wonder, why don't they just go straight across? It's a desert. It's hundreds of miles and you would die. So they go, they follow the Euphrates. They follow the river uh, network there. And they follow around. And they get about halfway there. See the very top? This is Haran. They got there on their way to Canaan, to the promised land. And they just stopped. They just camped out. And they stayed there for years. On the way to the promised land. And they get there and the whole family just stays. Stuck. Not making it where they were going. And so, I want you to listen to these words from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. If you have your Bibles, you can follow along. If you have a Bible app, you can go to Genesis chapter 12. Years have gone by. Abraham's father has finally passed away. Now, Abraham, in, in the ancient world, there was this really strong family ties. But now he feels free to kind of continue the journey. And God calls him. The Lord said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Now, understand, they're in an intermediate place. They're not back in Ur. They're in the kind of in-between spot. And God says, go to the land I'll show you. And listen to what God tells Abraham. He becomes Abraham. He's Abraham at this point. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. God calls Abraham to go. But it's always easier to stay. It's familiar. My family's here. I know these people. I know the landscape. It's almost always in life easier to stay where we are, even if where we are isn't the right place. Sometimes you look at people and you say, why don't you get out of that situation? It's not healthy. It's not good. Yeah, but it's familiar. So we hunker down and we ride out the storms. But sometimes God calls us to take a step, to move on. And so Abraham is invited but what we see is, is that one step at a time, he begins to follow. One step at a time, he goes where God has called him to go. 
And so again, we're going to just pause and pray. Lord Jesus, would you lead us today? We find the familiar settings of life the most comfortable. But following you is always an adventure. It's rarely the same as the way we've set our lives up. So where we're stuck, begin to break things loose. Where we need to go, begin to lead us, we pray, for the glory of Jesus. Amen. So Abraham follows. He goes. And he ends up in the promised land. He gets there. Now, now I, I can tell that story, and it sounds really easy. There, was, there were real challenges involved. It was hundreds of miles to get there. But step by step, one step at a time, God leads them to where he wants them to be. And, and here's, here's an interesting thing. When, when Abraham's father passes away, how old do you think he was? Well, he was 75. You might have pictured, well, when his dad passed away, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm free to go where I want. You figure he's maybe 15, 18, maybe early 20s. He's 75. Again, family ties in the ancient world, very tight. And staying where you were seemed more comfortable. But finally, he makes the move he follows. So I want to do this. I want to look at some of the lessons from the past. Each week we're, we're saying, God, ignite my heart. Kind of give, give, me that, give me that lift in my spiritual growth by looking at people who've gone before us in your word and let their life and their example inspire me. So here's some lessons that we can learn from watching Abraham's life. Number one, sometimes we get stuck on our own way, on our way to the promised land and need to hear a fresh call from God. For, for Abraham, he was heading with his family. He was going. He got half, about halfway there and got stuck. Sometimes we get stuck. We have to acknowledge that. That was Abraham's experience. And on our way to the promised land, we may not get to where God's calling us to go. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you come to the cross, confess your sins and accepted Jesus, heaven is your home. And that's where you'll be one day. But in this life, oftentimes God has more for us than we imagine and we can get stuck along the way. That happened for Abraham. At 75 years old, he finally started to get unstuck. Number two, as we look at Abraham's life, the next step can seem costly, maybe too costly. Sometimes we stay where we are, and, and for, for Abraham, this was the fact, for Abraham, he was where he was, and it was comfortable. He knew the people. He knew the place. It was a place he'd settled into. And so when God calls him, in Genesis 12, 1, God says, leave your country. This is, now it's become your new home. Leave your country. Leave your people. Some of his own tribe and people are going to stay there. So now you're leaving your country. He's leaving his people. And now take your family with you and make the move. This can be a sticking point. For, for, for Abraham, he had to look and say, will I leave the comfortable place? Will I leave my family? Will I make this move the way that God has called me to? He had to decide that. But sometimes the next step can seem too costly. If you have a next step in your heart or your mind, and for some of you, the Holy Spirit has already kind of spoken to you and nudged you and said, I've been telling you for the longest time, take this step. Step into this, step out of that. Change this behavior or pattern. Begin this new pattern of life. There's something that, you, that you've been stirred by the Holy Spirit, the whispering voice of the Spirit has said, it's time, it's time, and you just get not now, not now, not now. It's gonna cost too much, it's too challenging. That was the case for Abraham. Number three, the next step can lead to blessings beyond our wildest imagination. Being faithful to the call of God can blow your mind. And you may find blessings more than you can imagine. So God says to Abraham, he says to him, I will make you a great nation. That means lots and lots of people. Now at this point, he and his wife had no kids. It probably sounded pretty exciting. So God says, and in the ancient world, uh, your offspring were so core to the future. So, you know, future was passed on generation to generation, story after story. He had no kids yet, but God said, I'll make you a great nation. Man, that must have sounded wonderful. God says, I will bless you. When the God of heaven says, I'll bless you, man, that's, that sounds pretty exciting. God says, I will give you a great name. You have to understand, in the ancient world, in Abraham's day, a person's name was their character, was their, was their story, was who they were. And God said to Ab Abraham, I'm going to make your name great. For us, a name is what we got from our parents. For them, it was a reflection of their whole life, who they were. And God says, your name will be great. And to top it all off, I will give you a land. In the ancient world, land melt meant everything. When you had a piece of land, a place you belonged, you could put down roots. So God says, I want you to move from this place, go here. But when you get there, I'm going to give you a land that will be yours and the land for your people. So, so God says to Abraham, I'm going to bless you in amazing ways. Do you know there's times where God invites us to move and promises blessing and we still stay stuck? 
because it's comfortable, because it's familiar. A fourth lesson from Abraham. Taking the next step can be world-changing. When you take, for, 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 for Abraham, he's here, he's in Haran, he's called to go to the land of Canaan, and that first step to begin moving down the road towards God's will for him became a world-changing event. How can I say that? In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, God tells him, I will bless you, and you will be a blessing to the ethnos, to all the nations, to all the people of the world. God tells, tells this one guy, Abraham, who, who he would eventually change, God would change his name to Abraham, God tells him, I will so bless you that the blessing I pour on you will overflow to every nation in the world. Because through the line of his people would come the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And all the world could be blessed through Jesus. Now, Abraham doesn't understand all that. He just knows that God says to him, I will, I will bless you and you will become a blessing to all the nations. But when you take the step, when he took that step, it opened the door for the world to be blessed. Thank the Lord for that courage. A world-changing vision. As I was thinking about this, I thought about the, the mission statement of Shoreline Church. And if you're at home, you won't, probably won't see the top screen here, but I said, put it in small print. I, I don't want it to be too uh, overstated here, right? Subtle, right? Uh, Shoreline's mission to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. That was the mission of Shoreline Church before I became the pastor here um, almost 14 years ago. It's still our mission today, to help as many people as possible. We want to reach the world, help them become totally committed, grow as disciples. To who? To Jesus Christ. That's a world-impacting vision. And when you follow God's vision, God does amazing things. Number five, another lesson from Abraham's life. It is never too late to take the next right step. It's never too late. <sighs> Lord, I've been stuck here for a month. I, I felt your prompting. I felt your conviction. I, I was in the scripture, and again, you just kind of convicted me. I gotta take this step, and I haven't done it. It's just too late. No, it's not. Abraham is 75. And when he takes this step, God unleashes a new work in the world. It's never too late. Look at his life. Learn from him. And, and some of you are going, I, I'm, I'm too old, it's too late, or I've been standing here too long. No. Today, if you take the step God's called you to take, you watch what God will do. God is still ready to unleash his blessing in you and through you to others. A sixth lesson from walking with Abraham on a step-by-step -step journey. The next step always impacts the people around us. Always, always, always. Always. If we think we can take a step in life and it's just me, even one step impacts the people around us. If you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. If you're married, you know what I'm talking about. If you have friends, you know what I'm talking about. In any relationship, when you take steps of faithfulness or of unfaithfulness, in a way you're bringing people along with you. So why not take the steps of faithfulness? And then a seventh and final lesson from Abraham. There's more here, but these are the ones I want to really focus on today. A seventh lesson. Take every step aware that God is with you. If you're following God's will, if, if, if you're, if you're, even if you're stuck, if it's been a long time, when you take that next step toward the will of God, he is with you. For Abraham, God was with him. And we see Abraham worship. We see him acknowledge God's presence. Each place that Abraham goes, he builds an altar. He builds a place where he can meet with God, where he can remember God's faithfulness. He establishes these monuments so that when people come by and see them, they realize Abraham's been there and he wasn't there alone. He was there with a God who leads him. Abraham recognized that God was with him every step of the way. Do you recognize that? And so those lessons, all of those just, just sort of, I really think just kind of flow out of the biblical text. Go back and read, read Genesis 12 today, reflect on it deeply, and you're gonna see the storyline that God's unfolding. And so as we do each time we gather, we talk about what does it mean for us? Planning to follow Jesus one step at a time. If you say, okay, I'm ready to follow Jesus one step at a time. For some of you, you're not a Christian yet. Every time we gather at Shoreline, online, on campus, we have lots of people who don't yet know Jesus. I know that because almost every time we invite someone to people to receive Jesus, there's people who do, who haven't come to faith in Jesus yet. So you may be here kind of curious and wondering. Pay attention right now. Because if you give your heart to Jesus and begin to follow him, you're going to recognize some things that will become part of your life. But if you are already a Christian, I want to think through these seven lessons from Abraham, and I want to just let the, kind of the mirror of Scripture kind of reflect on us. So each of Abraham's lessons that he learned, they apply to us. 
Because this is what it looks like when you follow God one step at a time. So let's think about our lives. And now, and hopefully your hearts and minds have been on the scriptures. You've been on Abraham. Right now I want you to just think, okay. So now I'm going to think about what it means to follow God one step at a time in my life. For me to do this. And each of these lessons can impact your life. So here's the first thing. You can ignite your discipleship journey. You can kind of launch into a deeper place as a follower of Jesus by doing this. Number one, responding when God is helping you get unstuck. Responding when the Spirit whispers. When you're reading the Bible, and there it is again, there's that that truth from the Word of God that challenges you, that convicts you. It's time to stop that. It's time to start that. It's time to go deeper. It's time to take a risk and follow me. Every time you do... You can ignite your growth by by actually responding when you feel God is speaking to you. I love the story where Jesus comes to the man by the pool. And this man's been laying there for years, for years. And every time the water bubbles, there's a superstition. It wasn't true, but there's a superstition that the water bubbled, the first one in the water got healed. But he could never get to the water in time. And he's waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And Jesus comes to him. And Jesus says, do you want to get well? Do you want to be healed? Now you might think, what a dumb question. He's by the pool. He's waiting. He's there. But Jesus is saying, yeah, I get it. You're here. But do you really want to be healed? Are you really willing to change your life? Or have you become so comfortable being stuck here by this pool that this has become your new home and you're not leaving? Do you, are you serious about this? I think Jesus asked that, asked that question. I mean, when Jesus walked on this planet and when people wanted to follow him, he'd say, well, here's what you need to do. Just deny yourself. Be ready to die every day. Pick up your cross and just go wherever I go. Follow me. Oh, that's the journey. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Deny what I want. Count the cost. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. If I had known the day I became a Christian all that God would call me to do, I don't know if I could have taken the step. All I had to know when I was 15 years old, all I knew was if there's a God who really loved me, and if Jesus really died on the cross for me, this is my step. Jesus, if you want me, you can have me. That was my first step. Simple prayer. If you want me, you can have me. I wasn't totally sure God was real. I grew up in an atheistic home. I didn't know if this was all true. But I said, God, if you're really there, and if Jesus really died and rose, and you want my life, you can have me. And God said, oh, I will take you just like you are right now. But I'm not going to let you stay there. (laughs) And all I had to know was that next step. And so be thinking. Let the Spirit speak to you. What's your next step? And when God shows you, take that step. Take it. A second thing that will ignite your discipleship journey is counting the cost of following God's will and God's plan. Count the cost. Say, if this is God's will, if this is God's plan, and I know it's going to cost me. I mean, I'm, I'm, from, I'm in the familiar, I'm in the comfortable, and taking that step is going to cost me something. I know that there could be a cost involved. It's not always easy. It's not always smooth. It's not always that God kind of goes ahead and brushes every little uh, bump off the road and says, just walk the smooth path. Following him can be challenging, but will you follow him even when it's challenging? I've shared with some of you in different settings, but uh, when Sherry and I were engaged in getting ready to get married... I wanted to give her a real picture of what it's going to be like to be married to me. And, she, and so she wanted, to, she wanted to raise a family. And I was living on a pastor's income in Southern California, barely making ends meet. And then we were talking about now me supporting a family. So I said, Sherry, you have to understand something. If you marry me, we'll never own a home. She grew up in West Michigan where you get engaged. And when you're engaged, you kind of start looking around. And then right when you get married, you buy your first starter home. You know, you spend what, about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to buy a home. Hello, um, not that way anymore, but going back a few years. But, you know, and, then, and then after a while, you can move to the next home. And, and I said to her, honey, if we're going to get married, you're marrying a guy who makes X amount and homes cost X amount. And at the time, I think interest rates in, Southern Cal- or in California, or interest rates were like 12.9% or something. And, and so we looked at it and did the numbers and said, we will probably never have a home. And she said, Yes. No, and I'm glad she did. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, exactly. My thoughts exactly. Thank you. Sometimes you just say what I'm thinking. Uh, And then then I said to her, then I said to her, and honey, we'll buy anything we buy for our home from from garage sales. She said, I'm not going for that one. And then she won on that debate. So so we we had to negotiate, right? Is that true, honey? Uh, Yeah, it's true. Okay, so I tried. But I I was trying to lower the bar as far as I could. because now, Now, by God's grace, we have a home. 
but we didn't know we would. God's poured out more blessing than we imagined. But can I tell you, I thank Jesus that this woman said, okay, I'll take my next step to say getting married to you and all the things as a Holland, Michigan girl that I kind of thought would be part of the beginning of our marriage won't be the beginning of our marriage because that's not what it's like back then on one modest income in California to do. But she took that step. And God surprised us with things. Where we live now, we would have never dreamed. But we knew that that was the next step to take. What's your next step and will you count the cost? Whatever that is to follow Jesus and see what he does. You can ignite your discipleship journey by dreaming God-sized visions. Abraham, when God called him, before he ever became Abraham, took that step, but God said, I will bless you and you will become a blessing to the ethnos, to all the people on the planet will be blessed through you. Here's Abraham. He can't imagine what that means, that one day the Messiah would come through his bloodline and that Jesus would live on this planet, God in human flesh. Jesus would die on a cross and bear our sins and bear our shame and Jesus would rise again from the dead and ascend to heaven and conquer sin, death, and hell and offer salvation to anyone in the world. Abraham didn't know that. All he knew was that God said, follow me, and I'm going to bless you in a way that will bless the nations. He just had to be faithful, not knowing what that meant, not knowing how that would play out. But God's God-sized vision has come true. And through his bloodline, through Abraham's bloodline, through his lineage, all the way to today, we see the blessing of God flowing around the world. It's amazing. Will you dream something bigger than you could dream? I think of when Howie and Linda Hugo, Howie was the founding pastor of Shoreline Church. Many of you, are, this might be your first Sunday here. Some of you have been coming here for months or, and you would never met Howie and Linda. But God called them to leave a really comfortable place and a really comfortable work environment and a comfortable life to take a step towards Monterey where you can't buy land and build anything, basically. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a tough area. And so, and, and they tried and tried and looked for, and Shoreline bounced from place to place to place to place till finally God gave a home here. And this is this beautiful cathedral was built uh, as a, as a uh, place of worship, right? No, this was a warehouse. You're sitting in a warehouse. The risers weren't there. When we started in this space, the sound in here was so bad because it would bounce off. You know, see all these things on the wall, the weird shaped things? Those aren't decorations. That's so that we can have sound in here because this room wasn't built, it wasn't built for this. But Howie and Linda said to God, we'll take the step, we'll move to Monterey. We'll pick up our, we'll, we'll pack up our family and we'll go to a new place. A God-sized dream. Anybody want to say praise the Lord for their God-sized dream? Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Right, that people choose to do that. Yeah, amen, amen. And so dream big because God is a big God. Ignite your discipleship journey by believing God's mission applies to your life. That you would understand that the mission of God is your mission. God's mission for Shoreline to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. That's that's God's vision. That's God's dream. And so we've got to walk in that. We've got to live in that. We've got to believe that that, that God's mission is not just for those, it's not just for Howie and Linda. It's not just for Abraham. God has a mission for you. He has a plan for you. He wants to shine his light right where he's put you. Do you know that if everyone who's part of Shoreline Church looked at wherever you went, wherever you go tomorrow, if, everyone, if you're not part of Shoreline, you're visiting today. Wherever you go tomorrow, if you were to say, I'm going sent by God on a mission to bring his love and his light. That would impact thousands and thousands and thousands of people in this community. Let God's mission become your mission. Let it grow in your soul. Ignite your discipleship journey. If you're a note taker and writing these down, this would be the fifth thing. By taking the next step now. Taking the next step now. When God called Abraham to go, he went not knowing how it was going to turn out. He responded. Can I tell you what's, what's very likely going to happen in the next hour to two hours? For many of you listening online, for many of you listening on campus, as we're talking about this, God put something in your heart. And we're going to take a quiet moment to reflect in just a moment and ask God to speak to our hearts. But God's going to stir something in your heart. It's time to take the step. It's time to be bold. It's time to trust me. One step, but here's your next step. And you're going to say, I'm doing it. I'm finally going to do it. And then the enemy's going to come and begin to whisper in your ear, don't do it. It's going to go bad. It will be uncomfortable. Don't do it. That's for people different than you. You don't have enough faith. You don't love God enough. You're not bold enough. Those are lies from the pit of hell. 
So what God stirs in your heart today, take that step and watch what God does. And once you take that step, you know what you get to do next? Take the next step. Okay, Lord, what's next? One step at a time. But take that one next step today or as soon as you can and don't give it a chance to grow cold in your heart. And then number six, if you want to ignite your discipleship journey, invite the people close to you on the adventure of following Jesus. Invite people who know Jesus to walk with you into what he's leading you in if they could come alongside with you. And, and, and invite people to, to recognize that as God's leading you on a journey and if you're in relationship with them, they might be able to enjoy that as well. I think about when, when we were praying, the first time I was invited to be a lead pastor at a church. And it became the, the first church I went to as a lead pastor. And sure, I was thinking about this earlier. Our boys, I think when we went to that, to that church, they were like one, three, and five about. Does that sound about right? Is that, would that be right? No, no, no. They were older, like two, four, and six. Yeah. But our boys were little. And I remember talking to our boys about the fact that God was asking us to leave the church. You know, could be asking us to leave the church we were at and go to this new church. And our oldest son, Zach, said to us, yeah, Dad, I don't want to go to that new church. I like our church here because it was familiar. He didn't know what the other church was going to be like. So he was ready to stay. I mean, he's a little kid. But we asked, we asked, we've always asked our boys along the way with three sons. We've always asked them to pray with us and to talk with us about any decision. And so one morning, Sherry was downstairs having her quiet time. The boys were sleeping upstairs. And Zach came down. She's, I wasn't there. She told me the story. And she said that Zach stood kind of near the bottom of the stairs, kind of looked out the window. We had this big glass one, this big open grassy yard and that we could pile up all the leaves and the kids would jump in. They had memories there, right? And he just said kind of to himself and to God and to my wife, little guy, he says, yeah, I think God wants us to go to that other church. He didn't want to go. But God spoke to a little five-year-old boy. Stirred his heart. And he does that for you. So pay attention and respond. And, and, and just invite God to lead you. We invited our boys along on each journey God called us on. Because they're our boys. They're, go, they're going with us anyways. But we didn't want to just say, you're going with us. We want to say, pray. And so invite people into the journey. Not just go with me because I'm going. But pray with me. Talk with me. And walk together. And then finally... A seventh lesson for Abraham's life. Ignite your discipleship journey by opening your eyes to God's presence and building altars to remind you that God is here. Now, I'm not talking about idolatrous altars, but what Abraham did was wherever he went and settled, for, as they were moving around, he would set up a place to worship. He'd have a spot where he could sit and meet with God. Do you have that in your life? You should. For me, it's just a chair in my study. But when I sit there, I open the word, I pray, I meet with Jesus there. Years ago, we had a conference. We had a guy, Juan Carlos Ortiz, was this amazing uh, Latin American evangelist. And we had him come speak at this conference at our church when we were in Michigan. And he talked about how he had this very special place, this beautiful river. He looked kind of like in the L.A. Basin area. This beautiful river and all this garden and river he would go to and meet with Jesus. He said, a couple times a week, I go to this place. It's like that. It's a secret place I go. And I sit there and I worship. And it's just this beautiful river and this garden. And so uh, he said, then one day he had a guy who had come to visit him. And the guy said, you know, Juan Carlos, I've heard you talk about this river and garden. Can I go with you sometime and pray with you and meet with Jesus with you in that place? He says, I'd love to have you guys. I don't really invite people there with me. So he took him to this um, place where he sat down with this guy. And they said, well, let's pray together. And the guy's looking at it. And after they prayed a while, and Juan Carlos prayed a lot, probably prayed for a long time. They finished. And, and he said to Juan Carlos, he said, what it was, it was, a, it was a rain runoff going toward a little aqueduct with some shrubs. It was just, it, and it was like pavement and dirty, and it was nothing. And this guy said, Juan Carlos, you described this place like this river and this garden. And Juan Carlos said, it is for me because I meet God here. It became that in his mind and his heart, because the memories of God's presence, the memories of the worship, the memories of meeting with Jesus, that this miserable little spot in the L.A. Basin became, this, in his heart and mind, this river and this garden. Do you have a place? Because wherever you meet with God, wherever you meet with God, it's flourishing, and there's life, and it's beautiful. Find your place and meet with him. Like Abraham did, wherever he went, you can do also. So I invite you to quiet your hearts. And we're just going to talk to Jesus for a moment. We're going to ask him to speak to each one of us. If you're not yet a follower of Jesus, I encourage you to talk with me after the service today or talk with one of our pastors and just say, I want to know more about that first step of becoming a Christian. 
But if you are a Christian, right now before, between you and Jesus, would you consider making one of these declarations? Would you say, Jesus, I'm ready to get up and follow. I'm ready to push past my comfort zone to wherever you want to lead me. Maybe that's your prayer today. Maybe your prayer is to say this. Jesus, I've been staying put because the cost is too great. But today, I'll count the cost. Jesus, today I'll follow you, knowing what you want for me. Even if it's hard. Even if it challenges me. Maybe that's your prayer today. Maybe you're stuck in a place where your dreams are all small. But God has stirred something in your heart that's bigger. And maybe it's time to say, God, I'll follow you. I'll take that next step into a bigger dream of what you could do in my life. Maybe for you, each step you take is your step. You're, you're a great planner. You're an advanced planner. Man, you got spreadsheets and plans. You know what's next for everything in life. But you recognize that what you're doing is putting your plan together, not asking God for his. And maybe your next step today is to say, God, what's your plan? Will you show me your step, not mine, yours? Maybe that's your prayer today. Maybe you travel alone. You like to move fast and people can't keep up with you. But to travel in community, to bring people along with you, sometimes you've got to slow down. Maybe today you need to say, Lord, slow me down so I can invite other people along on this journey of following you. Non-believing friends that need to be invited to see you, Jesus. Christian friends, family members, who I kind of leave in the dust, honestly, because I'm just moving so quick. Maybe today you say, God, I'm going to slow down and walk in community with others. Maybe for you today, what God wants to do is invite you to make a place, to find a space, a place to meet with him. And sometimes some of you with your business, your work, you travel a lot. So you maybe have to set up a couple of different spots. Or maybe it's just a, a condition of mind <laughs> where you say, wherever I am, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to find the most convenient spot and it's going to become a garden. It's going to be kind of a running, running river of God's presence. Invite God to speak to your heart. I have no idea what your next step is that God has for you. But God knows and he wants you to know. For some of you, he's been already leading you to take that step and today's the day you're going to do it. And once we take that step, just asking God again, God, what's the next step? That's, our, that's the life of a Christian. One step at a time, following after Jesus. So Jesus, we pray that you would stir our hearts, that you would ignite our lives as we grow in you, as we go with you wherever you call us to go, as we become more and more your disciples, your followers. Give us the courage and the strength to take one step today. And then when you show us the next step, Lord, it'll be easier to take that step because we make it a lifestyle, step by step by step. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that in your power, in your glory, in the victory of the cross and the empty grave, that you will silence the lies of the enemy that keep people stuck where they've been and not going where you would call them. Let us follow your voice, follow your word, follow your leading. We pray this, Jesus, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Before I send you off with a word of blessing, I want to give a couple of invitations. This Wednesday night, 615, is the best Wednesday night of the month. Night of worship. We gather to share communion together, to celebrate Jesus. We're going through psalms of praise. We're going to worship together. So Wednesday night, 615. And there's a great children's program, Wednesday night, 615, for the kids going on here on campus. So come, bring the kids, get them set up to be part of that. So join us Wednesday night for night of worship. And then today, for some of you, your next step is going to be knowing what God has for you next. How God wants to work in you and through you. So we have a class on spiritual gifts. And my wife Sherry's heading out right now. She's going to be, uh, she's going to be actually leading that class. Um, and after, let me see, it should say up here, it is at 10 o'clock today, 12 o'clock in the garden room, and one, online, 1 o'clock for you online, so everyone can be part of this. You can find out how God has uniquely gifted you. You'll actually do a survey tool. And then if you want to, you can meet with one person who will walk you through how you can begin to unleash your gifts and take steps of following Jesus. For some of you, you've never done that. Maybe that's your next step today at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and online at 1 o'clock. If you need prayer, 
Our prayer teams will be at front on both sides of the stage here. They would love to pray for you. Some of you over the years have felt led to come up for prayer over and over and you've never done it. I don't want to bother them. Maybe that's your next step. Stand up, come forward, and be prayed for. And so if you're, if you're online, call the number you see, and someone will answer the phone and pray for you. Or you can send your email uh, prayers in, and we'll put it on the prayer list for our prayer team. And then finally, if you're new, if you're new with us on Shoreline on your online, just text the word welcome to the phone number you see right at the bottom of the screen. Text welcome, and we will reach out to you and give you a warm personal welcome. If you're on campus... Uh, head to the Connection Center right there in the lobby. They want to give you a gift bag. Thank you for coming and answer your questions. Give you a warm personal welcome. If you're able to stand, would you stand with us? If you're at home, if you're in the family worship venue, if you're able to stand, would you stand with us and receive this word of blessing? As we go from this time together, may the living God, by his spirit, give you the power today to take the one next step He has for you. And once you've done that, take the step after that. And then the next one. Following Jesus. Growing in faith. God bless you. Have a great next couple of days. We'll see you Wednesday night right here, 615 Night of Worship. Blessings on you.